Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're going to talk about five more modern day psychologists you should know. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you about five modern psychologists who are changing the science of psychology right now. Now, to make things a little more interesting, we've turned this into a handy dandy game. But you can't play a game without a contestant. Lovely contestant, if you please. Now, we've played this game once before on the channel and we'll make sure to link that down below, but let's do a quick rundown of the rules. Ready? Ready. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to show you a picture of the famous psychologists. If you know their name, you get a cool point. Sweet. <laughs> if you don't maybe know their name, but you can tell me kind of what they do, cool point. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so let's start with our five famous psychologists. Do you know this one? Ooh, I do know this one because I uh, have interacted with this person a few times. You lucky duck. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right. This is so, Irene Pepperberg. Correct. Very correct. And I know you know what she does, but I'm going to talk about it because I think she's amazing. So... This is Irene Pepperberg, and I actually kind of already knew this one was a little bit of a low ball, kind of a gimme, because you've actually interacted with emails, I believe, on things with her before, and I am incredibly jealous of that interaction. <laughs> she is actually probably the main scientist who made me want to be a psychologist. <laughs> So, Dr. Pepperberg is best known for her work in animal cognition, which is studying the way animals think and learn. Her most widely known work was with a gray parrot named Alex, but she's worked with many, many animals over the years and is a very avid animal conservationist, which makes total sense because she was able to demonstrate in her work that there are animals who can think and communicate in ways that we as humans can understand. Animals are really smart, and Dr. Pepperberg is incredibly smart because she was able to help the rest of us understand that. Mm -hmm. All right. No more low balls. Do you know the second famous psychologist? Ooh, this is an... Um... I don't know this one. You don't know this one. No. <laughs> we should get me some points when you don't know it. I don't like that idea. <laughs> So this is Dr. Rieko True. Uh, Dr. True was born in 1933 in Japan, which gives her the honor of being the longest lived mm. psychologist on our list today. Uh, she came to America in the late 1950s and was accepted into the grad program at UC Berkeley. After graduation, she had the chance to work with the wives of servicemen who had come to America from Japan. And while working with these wives, she realized just how isolated they were and became an advocate for better mental health and social support services for the Asian community. Her research and advocacy soon earned her national prominence, and she became one of the founding members of the Asian American Psychological Association and even served as its president. Cool. Very cool. So, third famous psychologist. Third famous psychologist. Okay. Do you know this face? <coughs> oh, man, that one's familiar. <laughs> oh, man. Um, that, I think he does something to uh, with attention, but I don't know his uh, name. Okay, you don't know his name. So, it kind of, yeah, it's, it's attention. We'll give you one cool point. All right. One cool point for that. Well, attention is a huge field, so that's kind of in... <laughs> Play the probabilities. <laughs> that is, you're learning how to game the system. I don't appreciate that. This is my game. Play by my rules. <laughs> All right. This is Michael Posner. He is a cognitive neuroscientist, and he was even awarded the National Medal of Science in 2008. So he's like a monumental influence, um, and you didn't get that name. Yeah. <laughs> His work focuses on attention and what we as humans really, what we pay attention to. 
So he's a very prolific writer. Probably where you might have seen his face is on the back of a book somewhere. Mm. <laughs> Certainly if you want to work in the field of learning or developmental psychology or perception, Posner is someone who is going to come up again and again in your studies. He even came up with his own way of testing how we shift attention between tasks. It's called the Posner queuing task which might just be the subject of a future video. It's actually really interesting. I call dibs. 2008 was a long time ago. I think I'm just too young to know who Michael Posner is. You're older than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, because, you know, you're getting even older, I let's just go ahead and move on to the next famous psychologist. <laughs> All right. Do you know this famous face? Hmm. Oh, this is a tough one. No, I don't, I don't think I know this one. This one is actually fairly local for us. This one is Dr. Melba Vasquez. And not only is she an amazing clinical psychologist, she is right here in Texas where we are. She hmm. went to Texas State University in St. Marcos and majored in English and political science and actually taught both of those subjects at the middle school level before she even went back to school for psychology. So when she did, she got a PhD in counseling psychology from the University of Texas and taught psychology at the university level before she went into her own private practice. Her main works have focused on ethics, which as you know, huge for me. <laughs> she served as president of the Texas Psychological Association and as the head of the Society for Counseling Psychology, that's APA Division 17, and the Society for the Psychology of Women, which is APA Division 35. And, I know, the list goes on. She also co-founded the Society for the Psychological Study of Ethnic Minority Issues. That's APA Division 45. She was also president of the APA in 2011 and the very first Latina ever elected to the position. I really actually love Dr. Vasquez as someone who didn't start her career in psychology and went out into the real world and spent some time before coming back and then became president of the whole thing. She's amazing. That's pretty cool. And she's very cool, but no cool points for you. Well, she is a clinical psychologist, and I'm an experimental psychologist, so, you know, so our different spheres. Different spheres, but maybe we might just have a very famous experimental psychologist coming up. Do you know this famous face? I know that face. <laughs> I would know that face anywhere. Yeah, this is uh, Mauricio Papini. He is. <laughs> And do you know what he does? I do. Uh, because he was my academic mentor. He is. <laughs> so he's a comparative psychologist. Yes. And this is Dr. Mauricio Papini. He is a comparative psychologist. And this may be the first time we've actually talked about comparative psychology on the channel. Which is weird because you trained under a comparative psychologist, but comparative psychologists study the brain and behavior in relation to things like phylogenetic history and adaptive significance. Um, in particular, Dr. Papini looks at anxiety and frustration. He was president of division six of the APA, which is behavioral neuroscience and comparative psychology. And when it comes to comparative psychology, he quite literally wrote the book. His textbook, Comparative Psychology, was definitely one of my favorites when I was going through university, and shameless plug or not, it's always one that I recommend whenever anyone starts asking me for reading suggestions. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see. Can we tally up my scores? Tallying up your scores. Tallying up see, your cool points. See how cool I am? See how cool you are. Not as cool as last time, I don't think. <laughs> so you got... Two cool points for knowing Irene Pepperberg and what she does. Right. You got two cool points for knowing Mauricio Papini and what he does. Mm -hmm. And then you got one cool point for knowing that Posner does study attention, but I think it might have been a guess. Th there was nothing <laughs> about being penalized for guessing. <laughs> So five more cool points on the chart for you today. If you want to see us play more games together, 
Or if you want to know more about modern famous psychologists, make sure you subscribe to Psy vs. Psy so you can get all of our other videos and you can learn all about the science of psychology. Until next time, keep thinking and we'll see y'all later. Bye! So were you surprised that I had Mauricio Papini on the list because he's like your favorite psychologist? Yeah, he's definitely my favorite psychologist and the one I thought would be on the list. I'm not putting you on the list.